Hi, my name is Tristy, and today we're going to look at uh, deploying our app on DigitalOcean. And um, the guys from DigitalOcean, great team, um, and they really focus on making the process to set up a droplet really fast. So a droplet is their equivalent of um, getting a server up and running, if you like. For some reason, all the different providers have their own version of what they call these things, but they're essentially the same. Um, it can be a little bit tricky to set something up with um, DigitalOcean. Once you get past getting the actual droplet up and running, it's kind of handed over to the community and uh, you can have a look uh, at the documents the community have put together. But sometimes um, it can be a little bit tricky trying to figure out your way through all the documents and how they all relate and you know, depending on what you want to do. Uh, when you go to the Digital DigitalOcean website, um, go ahead, put in your email address, password, create a new account. Um, you get an email and you just need to, uh, I think there's just a link in that, so you just need to follow that link, make sure you authenticate. Once you do that, uh, you'll be able to come to something like this. So you confirm your email, um, you do need to provide billing details um, and you can also get, I think uh, there's a lot of affiliate links around. I've got one of my own, um, which you can use to get uh, $10 credit. Um, but you do still need to provide billing details, whether that's a credit card or, or PayPal. Um, so once you've beyond to those two key steps, um, we can we can create our droplet. Okay, but before I do that, what I want to do is actually set up a secure connection, um, and I can do that. I'm using a Windows machine, so I'm going to use Putty. Um, but for anyone using Mac, I'll actually just include a link um, to some documentation that you could use to use a, to set up. Um, SSH for a Mac, but for um, a Windows machine, we need to go across to Putty um, and just go down. We need two files. We need Putty and we need Putty Gen to generate the SSH key. The quickest way to do that is just to install um, this one here, which just installs um, both of those things for us. And once we've done that, we just need to go ahead and open up um, Putty Key Generator. You can do that just by um, going to um, your Start menu. Okay, so when we um, open up Putty, it's going to look um, something like this. So we want to go ahead and create a new key. Um, and to do that, we've just got um, these parameters down here. They're fine. Um, you know, in most cases, the default's going to work. Um, next thing all we need to do is hit generate. You can just um, move your mouse around to give it some randomness. Apparently, that helps with the randomizing. Who knows if that actually really happens. All right, cool. So, um, so now we've got a bit of a, a fingerprint, um, and what we want to do is um, we're just going to save both of the the public key and the private key. So you can just click on both of those buttons. All right. So now what we need to do is actually add this key back into um, DigitalOcean. So I'm just going to put that over there, make that a little bit smaller, so I can see both these, um, and go across to DigitalOcean. Oops, what's happened there? Smaller. Okay, so go across DigitalOcean, just go to SSH keys, and we'll just go add, um, and you can give it a name, whatever you want. So it might uh, mean project. Um, and then what, what we actually need to do is um, copy across the contents of our public key. So that's, um, that's all of this guy here. So just copy, just start from the top, copy all of that, paste that in here, um, and you've got a name for it, so that's all good, and we just click Create SSH Key. Okay, so now what I want to do is actually go ahead and create that droplet that we've been talking about. So jump across to Droplets, and we can click on Create Droplet. All right, I'm just going to give it a name, so I'll just call it um, mean project. Um, just select a small size. Um, I'll select scene ports probably closest to me. Um, now down here, you can actually select an image that you want to use um, for your droplet or for your server. Um, if you jump to app applications, you'll see a couple things here that might stand out to you. Um, over here we've got Node, so we've got an option of just hosting Node in, on our server. Um, or we can actually install the whole Mean stack on our server as well. So if you just wanted to grab um, an empty copy of Mean for some reason, 
um, and had that up and hosted straight away, you can um, you can do that using um, you can, using this option. Um, I'm just going to show you the whole process of how this is going to work. So we'll go across to Node. We'll just select Node, and then at the bottom here we can select our SSH key. So I'll just select the one um, that I set up, and it actually says down the bottom here that it's not going to email me out a password because I've just selected to use um, this SSH key. So um, if you didn't set up that process, you can still get your app up and hosted, but the difference would be that you would be using a special um, username, which is root, and a special password that will be emailed out to you. So uh, let's create our droplet. All right. Um, so the, um, the idea is that this should only take sort of 60 seconds. Um, I've had somewhere between just over 60 seconds um, all the way through to just over two minutes. So, um, so we'll see how long that takes us. All right, so it looks like we're almost there. Fantastic. So our, um, our droplet's up and look, it's actually better than it promised. So we've got it done in 51 seconds, which is awesome. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is actually use Putty because we've got um, SSH set up. We want a secure connection to DigitalOcean in our new uh, droplet. Um, we're going to use Putty to do that. So I'm just going to go on and open that one up. All right, and so when we open it up, it's going to look something like this. I'm just going to put it over here. Um, and the first thing we need to do is just find our host name. And we can do that um, by just looking at the details for our, our droplet. So that's up here. If you weren't sure, you can go to, I think it's in settings, and you can see um, the IP address. So that's what we're actually after. Oops, let me just copy that. Um, paste that over here in host name. Um, leave it as port 22. SSH is fine. Um, just go across to connection. We go to data. Um, uh, auto login username. We're just going to use root. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we'll go down to this section for SSH and just go to auth. Um, and it, it allows us actually to select in. Um, or, or go and find the file that we want to use as our private key for authentication. So uh, we can just browse. Okay, so we go back up to session um, and we're just going to add in um, a name for this, um, this particular session. So I'm just going to call it, um, let's say, mean, uh, let's say, test do. Let's do that. Cool, and we just click, select save, and that just adds it to the list. We can select that, um, the one that we've just added, and just select. All right, now you may get something that looks a bit like this. It says warning, potential security breach. That's fine. You can just um, select yes, and uh, then we should just be able to log into Putty, and that will just authenticate. So now we're good to go to actually um, start getting our main app um, up and installed on um, on our droplet. So let's just have a quick look around. So we can just check what version of Node we have. So just go Node minus B. So that's great. So it's come back. It's gone 10.32 uh, or 0 0.10.32. So now what I'm going to do is actually go back to my app. The app itself has been committed to Git, but I want to actually push Git. Um, the, the source control up into um, either GitHub or Bitbucket so that I've got it um, somewhere that I can then access the files from um, my, uh, my droplet. So what I'm going to do is push the app up into Bitbucket. So um, Bitbucket, similar to um, GitHub, um, the difference is that uh, it's actually free for teams, I think, that are up to four or five people. So um, yeah, if you're if you're just using this to, uh, oh, there it says it's free for five users. If you're using this at um, you know in your, in your downtime, or if you've got a small team, um, this is a pretty cost-effective way to um, to get your app um, get some source control happening for your app. So I'm just going to log in. Um, the next thing I'm going to do. All right, so I just come up here, just grab SSH, so copy that. I'm not going to use it straight away, but I'll use it um, again in a sec. All right, so let's go back to our um, our digital ocean. So I'll just go back to our um, our droplet and just open up Putty again. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we want to do here. So I'm going to then install um, Git. So I'll go uh, apt get. 
install git. Okay, cool. So that's all good. Um, now I'm just going to do uh, git, oops, can type git clone. Okay, cool. So just press that in. And that should now clone from. So I've got, I've taken the app, put it up into, um, or put it into Git locally. Then I've pushed the whole Git package up to Bitbucket, and I've connected to it using um, this droplet. Okay. Now I'm not going to worry too much about that. What I'm going to do is just is do it slightly differently. I just use HTTPS. So just change that. Um, so I won't um, won't spend too much time trying to fix it. So uh, again, we just do git clone and just plug that in. So just throw in a password, and now we're um, we've gone and we grabbed all the um, the details for that for that um, package or that project that's sitting over in Bitbucket. Um, now what I'm going to do is cd into that folder that I've just created, which is that uh, my mean project dot folder. So I'll just go cd. Uh, my mean project. So now I'm inside that folder where I've just installed um, or just grabbed the git package. Um, and uh, and what I'm going to do um, is is go through the installation process um, just as we've done previously. So I'm um, just going to say npm install. And that'll go through, um, and just as we've done in um, in every other web host, uh, we'll install all of our dependencies. All right. So once that installation is completed, um, we just want to have a quick look at what we've got here. And you'll notice that we haven't um, we haven't actually gone through the Bower installation process. We've installed Bower, or Node um, npm has installed Bower, but it hasn't kicked off um, the Bower install. So if we went to our app now. Um, we wouldn't see anything on screen. It would be blanked out because Angular um, wouldn't have kicked off. So to do that, we just go Bower install, um, and you just go minus minus allow um, dash root. Uh, dash and minus is the same deal. Um, so let's do that. Ah, saying Bower could not be found. Okay, that's not a good sign. So let's um, let's make sure that. Um, that Bower is around. So we'll just do npm um, install um, Bower minus g. I always forget that Bower hasn't been installed globally. It's mean, usually one that I'll forget. Um, all right, cool. So now that we've got Bower installed globally, we can try that command again. So um, just hit the up arrow to go back. So we're going to just install uh, or use Bower now to um, install our client-side packages. Um, you can say yes, sure, you can report anonymously. All right, so we're just going through installing all the client-side packages. And believe it or not, we are almost there. So at this point, what we've got is our app now installed with all the server-side and the client-side dependencies um, in our droplet, which is um, being accessed by Putty right now, um, right here. So. At the moment, if we um, if we went ahead and um, and set up or drilled into our app, um, what you'd find is that um, we would be able to connect directly to development, or we could set up the environment variables to connect to production, so on and so forth. So let me show you um, how you would just go straight into um, development. So you can do that by just um, typing in grunt, right? So um, uh, just as we have, uh, wait, I did. I did. Did I not? No, I didn't. Okay, let me try that again. So let's install Grunt. So npm um, install Grunt. Make sure we've got the CLI bit on the end. Minus G. Uh, wrong one. Cool. Okay, let's try that again. All right, so I was doing all the kinds of things that we'd expect. Um, and it's told us now that our application is started on port 3000. Now, normally, at this point, we'd go to localhost dash 3000. But we're not going to do that here because we're not we're not hosted locally, right? We're hosted in this droplet. So how do we how do we find our app? How do we get access to it? Well, the secret 
is back in the IP address for this particular port, uh, for this particular droplet. So if we jump back across to our droplet, so we want that IP address, right? So we copy that and just open up a new browser window. Uh, let's just use the putty one there. So uh, we paste in that and then we also paste in the port. So 3000, um, so that, oops, it should just be um, colon in the middle and then we just hit enter. So instead of localhost, now we're going directly, we're using the actual IP address for where um, our droplet is, um, is currently hosted. And if all goes to plan, when you, um, when that, uh, when that comes back, you've, um, you've now got your app up and hosted using a digital ocean droplet. Um, took a little bit longer than some of the others because a couple more steps involved. We did go through the process of setting up SSH, so that does take a little bit longer. Um, but I hope that helped you out. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out bossable.com for more details. Let me know the other kind of things that um, you might be having some problems with that, you, um, that you'd like to see a video on. Um, yeah, and let me know how you're going with your app. Um, all right, cool. Well, I'll see you again soon.